Welcome Clarity Coders and guests. Today we're going to be talking about classes and objects in Python. So we're going to use Python 3 and I'm going to use Spider IDE to show you how to create your own custom classes to create any type of object you want in Python. Let's jump right in. So the example that I'm going to run you through here is a bank account class. I'm just going to create it like a standard bank account so you're going to have a balance and ID number and you can withdraw and deposit money into it. And we're going to start here by creating a class as bare bones as possible. So we're going to start with the class keyword and then we're going to name our class. I'm going to call it bank account and I'm going to use Pascal case so I'm capitalizing the first letter of each word and then I'm going to simply pass. And down here, I'm going to create my first instance of this class. So I'm going to use the class that I created above, and I'm going to create an instance of that class. And I'm going to create a variable to store that object in. And I'm going to call it first account. And I'm going to set it equal to my bank account class. Now, if I create this, you'll see a couple things. First, it defined my bank account class. And second, you can see it did in fact create an instance of my bank account a cl class in the variable called first account. And if I open that up just to take a peek, you can see that there's no attributes yet except the default ones. So let's fix that. We can go ahead on our account and create an attribute of whatever we want. So I'm going to call it balance and I'm going to set it equal to 500. And if I run this, now you'll notice that my instance of my bank account class that's stored in first account now has an attribute of balance with a value of 500. Now this is great, but this gives us a little too much flexibility with our class. We want to be able to tell people how to create a bank account. So I want to be able to say you have to use an ID and you have to give me a balance. And this is what it's going to be stored under. So we're going to do that by adding in our init function. So the init function in Python works like a constructor. So it's going to help us define how we're going to create a class of bank account in our case. So I'm going to define underscore underscore init underscore underscore parentheses. And then I'm going to say here what needs to be passed in to create a bank account class. So I'm going to start with the built-in word of self. Now right away, this doesn't make a lot of sense. We're going to circle back around on this. But self means that this instance knows about its own attributes. So it can have its own instance attributes. Hang on to that for just a second. And we're also going to pass in an ID number and a balance. And we could pass in whatever else we wanted to. We're just keeping this simple here end with a colon and then on my next line I can start defining those attributes on my bank account class so I passed in I'm saying you have to pass in two attributes right now the self is given automatically so then I'm gonna pass in two other items an ID number and a balance and I want to define those on my class so I'm gonna start by doing self and then dot and then whatever I want my attribute to be called in this case, I'm going to do ID number, and I'm going to set it equal to whatever I passed in for ID number. And I happen to name it the same, so I'm going to just pass in ID number. Then I'm going to also create an attribute called balance, and I'm going to set it equal to whatever I passed in for balance. Perfect. Now if I run this, I'm going to get an error. Because now my constructor, or when I tried to create the object down here, I didn't pass any values into it. So I want to actually create my bank account with the ID number, and I'm just going to use something here. If you're wondering, I'm coding the ID number as a string just because I'm not doing math with it. Preference thing. And a balance, and I'm going to give them a balance of 300. So I'm going to go ahead and while we're here, create a couple more instances of our class. I'm going to give them different IDs and 
some different balances here. And I'm just going to call these second account and my third account. Now if I run this, you'll notice that it creates all those accounts. So what I have here now is I've defined a class called bank account and I've created three instances of bank account. So three different bank account objects. Now each of those objects has their own instance variables. And those instance variables we decided upon. So we decided they should have an ID number and a balance. And if I open one of these up, you can see that they do have a balance and an ID number attribute. And they're all unique. One quick note here, you'll see this a lot, these parameters passed in matching the actual attribute names. Just keep in mind that those don't have to match. I could have called these whatever. And you'll see it still works. Just typically you see them match up name wise. So that's what we're gonna stick with here. Perfect, since we just talked about instance variables, let's go ahead and talk about class variables. So these instance variables are unique to each instance of our class. We also can use class variables when we want a variable that all instances will share. So all three instances in this case will share this class variable. I'm gonna call that bank name in our case and I'm just gonna set it equal to bank of clarity coders. So now if I run this, You'll notice without passing in anything individually on the instance level here, if I check on any of my instances, they all have a bank name that's called Bank of Clarity Coders. And you'll also notice if I make a change to that bank name, so if I say, for example, on my bank account class, I want to change bank name to equal some other bank. You'll notice if I run this, even the first account, which has already been created before I change the name, even the first account now has a matching class variable here of bank name of some other bank. So we have instance variables now, class variables that are shared. Now let's try and write a method on our class. So we want to give this class some functionality. Right now, once we create it, we can't. Well, there's no methods on it to change anything. So we're going to create a simple method, and I am going to call that method withdraw. Just given some space to help here, I'm going to tab inside of the class, and I'm going to define my method. I'm going to call it withdraw. I'm gonna pass in self here again. Now, why is that? Well, we're talking about withdrawing money. So when we withdraw money, we need to know what our original balance was. So we need to know about our own instance variable, whichever instance we happen to be talking about. I'm also gonna pass in the amount I want to withdraw. Now, all I have to do once I'm inside here is I'm going to update my balance. And I'm going to use the self keyword because I only want to update the balance of this instance, whatever instance I happen to be calling. And I am going to set it equal to whatever self.balance was before minus the amount I'm withdrawing. And now we can test this out. Let's do our second account dot withdraw. And you'll notice that it says we only have to pass in one argument because self is given. Self is second account in this case, just this instance. And I'm gonna subtract $1, I'm gonna pass in, I wanna withdraw $1 from my bank account. And if I run this, we'll take a peek at our second account here, and you can see that our balance has updated to subtract $1 out of there. And all the other accounts, of course, are not affected. Awesome, so we created now a method inside of our class that can interact with our instance variables.
Let's do one more here while we're at it. Let's define a deposit. We're going to do essentially the same thing. We're going to pass in self and the amount we want to deposit. In this case, we want to update our balance to equal self.balance plus whatever we're depositing. And then down here, we can test this out on an account. I'm going to do my first account dot deposit and we'll deposit $150. And when I run this, you'll notice that now my first account has been updated balance wise. It was at 300. Now it's at 450. So we've created a couple different methods here to run on our class. Now we've covered a big portion of classes already. We have instance variables, we have class variables, we have methods. I want to talk about one more thing. So you've noticed that I've been using Python's variable explorer to check out our output here. I want to implement a way that we can check how our classes are changing a little easier. You'll notice on our custom built classes, if I try to print out an account, I'll use my first account, you can see that it gives me Python standard output of the object information here. Let's update this to be a little more useful for our specific object. So we can do that by overloading a method, the string method. So I'm going to overload this method. I'm going to do underscore underscore str underscore underscore. The only thing I need to pass in in this case is self because it needs to know about its own attributes because I want to print something informative to the user. And this method just returns a string. So all we're going to do here is return whatever we want it to say. And in this case, I'm going to use f strings just because it's a little easier to format. If you haven't used these, super simple, you can write out and then use curly brackets to put in your variable names. So I'm going to write out what I want to print. I want to say account number. And now I'm going to use curly brackets. And then inside those curly brackets, I can use variables. So I can use um, my class variables or my instance variables, whatever I want to do. In this case, I want to print out whatever account this is, whatever their account number is. So I'm going to use self dot, and then I can use the instance name of ID number. Then I'm just going to do a space balance going to use the curly brackets again so it knows I'm referencing a variable and I'm going to pass in self dot balance. Now when I run this you'll notice that I get a little prettier output over here. So I get my account number of my first account and I also get the balance of that account. All right we're basically finished up here let's just do a little cleanup. I'm just going to add a comment here that these are class variables. These are our instance variables. Let's also use the shorthand here. So we're going to say minus equals to take whatever was in balance minus our amount. So we're doing the exact same thing we were doing here before, just a shorthand version. Same down here, we're going to do plus equals take whatever was in the balance plus the amount we're depositing and we should be good to go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you could. Let us know and we will do another one moving on with this bank account example and cover inheritance and also default parameters, things of that nature. Also, I'm going to pop up a URL on the screen for Clarity Coders. We're a group of programmers that get together that kind of learn differently. We have everything from advanced to beginners. And we offer everything from free tutorials all the way up to one-on-one -on -one tutoring and paid courses. Thank you for your time. Until next time, keep coding.